What up everybody, it's your boy Numemo back with another video. Today, we're gonna look at three tips that will be very helpful if you're looking to do live looping performances in Ableton, like the ones that I've been doing. So what I wanna do to start out is I wanna open up the session that uh, I used for the first Ableton Live performance that I did, which is pretty simple. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I've been using Ableton maybe for just two or three months. Before that, I was using uh, Logic Pro and I used a whole bunch of DAWs before that. But um, yeah, I've been working with Ableton and I, I wanna show you guys more or less on a beginner level what you can do to get started uh, doing live looping performances. For those of you who haven't watched the performance that I made, the Ableton Live performance uh, that I made uh, back in September, it might, I'm, I'm gonna link it up here, that way you can watch it so you know exactly what it is that we're breaking down here and yeah. So what I wanna do is more or less go through the session that I used uh, in order to create that Ableton performance. So here, this is the sample here. The first thing that I did was place the sample in. This is a sample that I had previously chopped a while back on Logic Pro. I think it's a four bar sample, so I bounced out the four bars, threw it here into Ableton Session View, uh, made sure that the, the, that the tempo was, was the same as well. So the tempo for this one is 139. Uh, placed it in here, here we go. Cool, so uh, then I added a track two. On the track two, I wanted to have the drum rack, so pretty much I wanted to have uh, one track where I set up all of the drums. Uh, here you see that the first thing that I added was uh, Fix 127. What it does is so whenever I play stuff on the MIDI keyboard, the sensitivity of what I play is fixed. So pretty much it always has the same volume. If I remove the Fix 127, when I play it soft, it sounds soft, and when I play it harder, it sound harder. Um, for live performances, to me, it's very helpful to have that enabled, um, especially for drums. That way you don't have it sounding crazy volume-wise. So here's the drum rack. I have my kick and I have my snare here. Um, and one cool thing, uh, one, of the first, uh, uh, one of the first tips that I have for you guys is that when you have a drum rack, it's nice that you can actually uh, play with the individual uh, volume of the sample right here. So you can uh, play with the, the volume of the kick with this knob and you can play with the volume of the sample with this knob here. So I think that that's pretty helpful that way you have the volume of each sample that you have in there uh, match and you don't have uh, volumes going all over the place especially if you downloaded drum samples from some random place and you're kind of uh, combining uh, snares and kicks and other samples from different packs sometimes the volumes can get crazy make sure you uh, you fix that previously uh, before your performance and save everything you guys hear that that's what winter in New York sounds like let me show you guys what that is I hate this thing it's so loud imagine trying to record vocals in this room in this living room in the winter it's terrible another tip that I have for you guys is that for recording purposes when you're doing these live performances you want to have a record quantization setting uh, placed what that does is that whenever you finish recording whatever you're recording in your performance it'll automatically quantize it so here when you go to you have to go to edit record quantization and then here you have a couple different options you can do eighth note sixteenth note whatever as soon as you finish recording bam it'll be it'll be quantized once you arm a track for recording, uh, you'll see that it'll switch from that square, you see the square here, it'll switch from square to record. So once I press this button, it'll allow me to start recording into that clip area. Um, now in order for me to, for it to stop recording and start looping, I have to press that button again. So one thing that I did is that I mapped this button here on my MIDI keyboard as the clip record button. That way I don't have to record and then run over here to press the button or run over here and press the button. It's right here, nice and convenient next to us. So as soon as I finish playing what I'm playing, I can press record uh, and it'll start looping. So here's an example. So I'm gonna start playing this. I'm gonna press the record button. And it just starts looping right automatically starts looping everything automatically everything is quantized perfect 
Another thing that you can do is you can actually have pre-recorded clips. So similar to the way I have my sample in there, there's certain things that I know that I can't play live. For example, hi-hat patterns are pretty tough to play live, especially if you have them doing like 16th notes and, you know, especially trap hi-hats can get very trippy. So uh, here I have a hi-hat pattern that I actually brought over from Logic as well. A little perk sound as well. But together, it all comes together perfect. So that's another tip there. So if there's anything that you think that you cannot recreate uh, in the performance, you can actually just make a clip out of it and dump it in there and enable it whenever you want. <laughs> um, and that you can use that with background. You can do that with background vocals, um, with any other instruments, any other drums. Another tip that I have for you guys is that if you're going to be recording multiple tracks at the same time, and what I mean by that is that let's say you want to be recording vocals but also be uh, recording MIDI parts uh, with one keyboard, maybe two keyboards, or let's say you have, you're, you're here with another musician who's recording guitar, you're recording vocals, MIDI parts, whatever. You want to make sure that you remove this default setting that Ableton has where it only makes it so that you can have one track armed for recording. Um, and this is what I mean by that. I'll actually record it here so I can um, show you guys. So let's say you wanna have this track recording here, um, record the MIDI keyboard, but you wanna make sure that this track is also, let's say, recording vocals. So if you're gonna enable the vocals for recording, it'll, it'll remove the, uh, the record from this track. So if you wanna have multiple tracks of uh, record enabled, you, you have to go here uh, into edit uh, line. You wanna to go to live, then preferences, record, uh, and here where it says exclusive, where it says arm, you wanna uh, uh, disable that. So now, when you go and you try to uh, arm various tracks for recording, you can have this one enabled and then press this one and it stays enabled. Now you just have to remember that if you no longer want to be recording on this track, you just gotta remove that. And that was helpful for me because I like to have my, uh, my microphone recording the whole time even while I'm recording MIDI parts. And so if you're looking to do that, you just gotta make sure you click that setting uh, so you can have multiple tracks record enabled, armed for recording simultaneously. The last piece of advice I have for you guys is that if you're gonna be recording vocals or guitars and you're gonna have like some kind of chain, uh, some kind of recording chain uh, for vocals, if you're gonna have a vocal chain, uh, let's say you're gonna have like re uh, uh, reverb, EQ, compression uh, going in, uh, you wanna make sure that the plugins you use aren't too memory intensive because if they are, you will get some latency. So let's say auto-tune, auto-tune definitely gives you some latency. So if you're gonna use that, um, if you're gonna be recording your performance, you can like record it and then add the auto-tune later. But if you're gonna be doing it for an actual live performance, uh, usually auto-tune will cause latency. I don't know if there's any way around it, but be very careful if you're gonna be recording vocals and you're gonna have too many plugins running at the same time because it will, you will get latency and it's very uncomfortable to be performing live and have latency going. So yeah, I hope you learned something today. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. Uh, let me know what you think. If you have any other questions or you want me to dive a little deeper into any of these subjects, feel free to let me know in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel if you like what you saw today. Much love, peace out, and yeah, holla. <laughs> Very quickly, I made this beat over the weekend and I think it's fire, so I'm gonna share with you guys a little preview. Let me know what you think. I thought it was a pretty dope sample, and uh, yeah, let me know if I should rap to that. I've been thinking about it. <laughs>